everyone, this is Adeline. I thought I'd do a quick little video and use one of the colorful snowflakes from Daily Art Hub to show you how to create both a cutwork file and an applique file. So the first thing you're going to do after working through the wizard is click Create New. Next, I use the default of Cotton 2 and just basically a white background. Click Next. From the file, I look for my folder of colorful snowflakes and I notice that colorful snowflake number five will work for what I want to demonstrate today. I select my hoop, large oval, number 26, and then next. I click the trace button. I want to convert this PNG file into a usable software file. Click Next. Goes pretty quickly. It's a basic file. And you'll notice once it comes up that there's only two colors. So that makes it really easy. I can change my palette if I want to by right or left clicking rather down to the editing textile stipe and then finish. First thing I want to do is I want to remove the white background. I can do it one of two ways. I can hover over the white background, left click, drag it off, drag it off, or I can also right click, select by fill color, and then it selects the white and then delete. And now I have my painted design. The first thing you need to remember to do always is to add an outline and a fill so that you can open both sections of the object properties box. To make my cutwork file, I'm going to click the outline and then I'm going to click cutwork. Otherwise it would paint. Select the running before option. I usually make it about one millimeter. The one thing I always do is I make my cutting offset about 0.3 millimeters. So it's a little bit larger than my design. Then I remove the fill. Otherwise it's going to paint. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to look and see. And yes, I have a cutwork file. I always like to go and do a slow redraw and stitch it out, make sure it stitches the way I like it. Then it switches to the cutwork tool. And I usually stop about then. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it. Now you'll notice that there's the cutwork file. See the little cutwork scissors right there? So now I know this is a cutwork file. I'm going to save it as, and I have already done it a couple of times. So I'll do it again. Snowflake 5-2 underscore cut. And that's my cutwork file. Now what I need to do is I need to now switch over to an applique, but you'll notice I can't access it because there's no fill. So now I have to add the fill back in, and now I can create an applique file. So if you notice, I just clicked in the fill over here on the left side, and it popped in so that I can create the applique. What I do here is I select cleaning, and since it's pre-cut, I select a laser. And then I scroll in and I just take a look and I make my offset applique a negative. Oops, I better click it first. And so now I have a negative offset. And then I go over into my outline and I switch it to a satin serial. And if I hover over it, you can see it's a small satin serial. I usually make it about 0 0.08, and that widens it. Sometimes it. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. You just have to kind of play around with it. 
and you'll notice that it's not as perfect and I could edit it but for class today we're just doing a quick one so we'll just go back and do a slow redraw see how it looks so it does the placement stitch and it does a tack down stitch and I usually watch it until it starts to satin stitch and see if I like it I can see there's a couple of errors here I would probably go back and edit but for quick and ease of today's snowflake design I'm going to leave it and shortly it'll start to satin stitch and I'm okay with that so I'll stop it and then I'm going to double check so I have an applique file and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save as instead of a cup file I'm going to save it as an app file so now I've quickly just created a cutwork file and an applique file I also can create a studio file from this but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go back I'm going to open up a new folder and a new graphic and then I'm going to look at my list of most recent files select the cutwork file and what I typically do is I draw a rectangle around it you'll see why in a minute I give it an outline take out the fill I call that the running stitch and then I set the size to something that I'll remember easily in this case it's a six by six square then I turn this cut work into a line and what I like to do is change the colors all to black and that's helps when I go to make my SVG file then I center it so I select both of them select center vertically and horizontally as both now what you're seeing in purple is the PNG file so I'm just gonna hide it so I'm not confused and then I'm now going to export it to SVG and I'm going to call it snowflake five underscore SVG then what I do is I open up my silhouette software and I import to my library my colorful SVG snowflake look for it there it is you drag it in here and you'll notice it's kind of hard to see so one of the things that I always do I'm going to close out my library here one of the things I always do is I drag this over oops let me grab it here gotta get that hand and then I change the color of the line I go into the line color window and I'll change the color something that I can see and the blue pops up I can also thicken my line if I select the line and just add to line thickness but in this case it's not necessary you'll see that it comes in at 8.130 inches by 7.979 and I go to my scale window which is this one right here this icon right here unclick lock aspect and if you remember it was something simple that I could remember six by six and apply and now I have a studio file I'm going to save it as snowflake 5 studio so if I just want to cut one then I can spray the fabric with Terial magic iron heat and bond light to the back peel off the paper and cut it out I'm going to close out this I hope I've answered all of the questions that you might have if not just in the comments in the 
post today. Just ask a question and I'll see if I can answer it for you. Thanks so much.